open up your Bibles to Revelation chapter 4. Did I turn that on over there? It may not be on. Revelation chapter 5, I'm sorry. Is it showing a green light? There we go. <clears throat> minor details, minor details. Revelation chapter 5. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. But one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the line of, Ju of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Then he came and took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Now when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals, for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of the tribe and out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on the earth. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them, I heard saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Then the four living creatures said, Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshiped him who lives forever and ever. For you ladies in here that are married, what do you do when you have a, a, a jar that you cannot open? When you have a lid that you cannot get off? Well, you're probably going to call your, your big, strong hunk of a man, right? And he's going to do everything he can to open up that jar you know, men want to be that knight in shining armor that is rescuing their lady. Now, there was a time in my life when I thought I was pretty much invincible. There was nothing that I couldn't do. There was no job that was going to be too tough. I was young, strong, energetic, and man, I could just do whatever I wanted. And I can tell you that there was a time that there was no jar that was going to stand in my way of opening. Every time Gina had a problem, she came to me and I got that lid off. Those were the days. <laughs> to be young, to be strong, and unstoppable. But you know what? There's a thing about being young. You see, we're human. And humans don't stay young forever. And I think there's many of us here that can attest to that. Our youth will disappear from us. It won't last very long. There's going to be a time when we're not able to open up that jar anymore and we're going to have to result to some kind of mechanical device to open that lid uh, for our precious little princess. You see, men want to be that hero. They want to be that to their, to their precious wives. They want to rescue them. They want to save them. They want to do all the right things for them. And that's a nice fantasy that men have to, to be that hero. But the truth is, we're just humans. 
humans that have been dying ever since the day that we were born. Humans that lose our strength. We're not heroes at all. The real hero, the only hero in our story is Jesus. He's the only one that did everything perfect. Now, ladies, if you've got a man in here that is perfect or that was perfect, that did everything right, I'd like to hear about it because I don't think there's any man in here that has done everything right. We all fall short. We all fail. Uh, but you love us anyway, and we're thankful for that. But the real hero is Jesus, and we just try our best to resemble him. We try to live our lives that represent the life that Jesus lived, to, to do everything that the Bible says that we need to do. We, we try to learn and grow and, and to be led by God. The real hero, though, is Jesus. Now today, we're going to step back and, and look into the throne room of heaven again, where we were uh, last week in chapter 4. So let's look back at verses 1 through 4. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back, sealed with seven seals. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, Who is worthy to open the scroll and loose its seals? And no one in heaven or on earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. So I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to look at it. We see the father standing in the throne room and he's holding on to the scroll that's in his hand. We see the angel ask pretty much a rhetorical question, a question that he's not really looking for an answer. He already knows the answer. Uh, and who is able to open up the scroll? That's the question that he asked. In all of eternity, there was only one that was found worthy to open up the scroll, and that's God. That's God himself. Jesus Christ is the only one that is worthy to open up the scroll. Because we are not God. We're just humans. We're not God. We don't know what the end result is going to be in every action that is going on in our life. Uh, and we can kind of get down on ourselves in life. We can have moments where we have hopelessness. We don't understand what God's doing in our life. And, and there's times when each of us, maybe multiple times throughout our life, where we felt like we were hopeless. We, we didn't have any hope. Uh, and in those times, that's when we need to trust God. Because in those times that, that we're feeling hopeless, God is saying victory is just around the corner. Hang on a little longer. Uh, I'm coming to rescue you one day. I'm going to help you to get over this trial. I'm going to help you through this heartache that you're feeling. Victory is coming. Now, how many times in your life have you felt defeated and without hope? I can speak for myself, and I can say it's been many times. Even as a Christian, even as a pastor, I've had moments in my life where I felt hopeless. And I know we all go through those times in life. We all struggle. The late Dr. Adrian Rogers said, we ought to be living as if Jesus died yesterday, rose this morning, and is coming back this afternoon. Can you imagine how much better your life would be if you lived like that? Jesus died yesterday. The past is in the past. Let the past stay in the past. Live in the joy of today. Jesus rose this morning. And then trust and hope in the future. Jesus is coming back this afternoon. You see, if we could all live with that in our lives, each day that you face, if you could say, it's going to get better, it's going to get better, we would have so much hope. We would be able to trust God. But you see, we don't know all the answers like God knows. There's many times in, in, in our lives that we, we don't trust him with our future. We want to hold on to that hopelessness. We get down on our lives. You know what? In all of this, I'm amazed. 
I'm amazed at the Apostle John. He's standing in the throne room of heaven. He's standing there before God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He's standing there in the presence of God in all of his glory, surrounded with all the beauty of the throne room, all the wonders of heaven. And here we find him hopeless. He's living without hope. Nobody can open a scroll. We find him weeping much. When we don't hope, when we live in hopelessness, it'll kill our bodies, it'll kill our souls, it'll drain the life right out of us to where we don't even look like we're living anymore to people. But here we find John weeping because he's without hope. Then one of the elders spoke. Look at verses five through seven. But one of the elders said to me, do not weep. Behold, the line of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scroll and to loose its seven seals. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures, and in the midst of the elders, stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. Then he came and he took the scroll out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Jesus goes from the lion of the tribe of Judah, the heir to the throne of David, whose kingdom will never end, to be in the Lamb of God that was slain for the sins of the world. Jesus humbled himself. And in the weakness that it appeared that Satan was accomplishing on the cross, Jesus found strength. And Jesus tried to teach Paul that lesson in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, when he said, when Paul said, And he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Paul was asking God three different times to remove the thorn in his flesh. And what Jesus said was, My grace is sufficient. For my strength is made perfect in your weakness. You see, sometimes God makes us weak so that we will become strong. And I can tell you that from personal experience. In 1999, I was the weakest I've ever been in my entire life. And God said, hang on, buddy. I'm going to show you some things. And he strengthened me. And, and now I can stand here today and tell you all that. In what the devil thought was weakness at the cross, Jesus turned it around for our salvation, for salvation for his people. In what the devil thought that was weakness with Paul, with the thorn in his flesh, Jesus turned it around and Paul was giving God the praise for the weakness in his flesh. The devil will attack us and he'll make us feel weak. And what we do in that weakness we need to allow God to strengthen us to tell the devil that he's wrong, that God's strength and glory and honor and praise comes out of our weakness. Sometimes, though, we feel defeated. We feel like we, we can't go on. The struggle is far too great. But Jesus said, I'm with you. I will help you through all of the struggles that you're going through. You see, God is always working in our lives, and it doesn't matter what we feel. God is still there, and he's still working to bring about his goodness and glory. God is always with us, and we need to turn around and always give him the glory for what he does in our lives. Look at verses uh, 8 through 14. Now... When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our God and we shall reign on the earth. 
Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders. And the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And every creature which is in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and such are in the sea and all of them that are in them, I heard saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Then the four living creatures said, Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshiped him who lives forever and ever. The 24 elders fell down at the feet of Jesus and were given him praise, honor, and glory. There were millions upon millions of people that were singing out the praises of God. And again in Revelation it says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. It doesn't matter whether you're a believer or not. One day you're going to bow down before God and you're going to acknowledge that He is the Lord and we're going to give Him the praise, honor, and glory. And the thing is that we need to be on the right side of it. A good life will lead to a life of praise. When we live our life to honor God and we're following His Word and we're singing our praises to Him, then the world will see what God meant us to live like. And what we live like is different from the world. We sing a new song. We sing a different song, a song of praise to God. We don't sing what the world sings. We don't do what the world does. We don't live as the world lives. We are being led by a new way of life, and that life is found in Jesus Christ. We have a new name, a new song, and a divine purpose in life and that purpose is to is to praise God and to share the love of God with others Luke 15 10 says likewise I say to you there is joy in the presence of angels angels of God over one sinner who repents there's a couple of things that angels will rejoice over one is a repented born again believer and and live in a person that's living their life for Jesus Christ and then the other thing is the majesty of the one that saves us, that redeems us the Lord Jesus Christ the angels rejoice over our salvation and they rejoice over the glory of Jesus now there's a, there's a little bit of a side note that I found absolutely remarkable in preaching the last two weeks I told you last week that in the throne room there were 24 elders. And those 24 elders were believed to be the 12 patriarchs and the 12 apostles. Well, who is one of the 12 apostles? John. John is standing in the throne room and he's seeing the 24 elders up there. John is seeing himself in the future as one of the 24 elders. But he doesn't even recognize himself. It's the same when Jesus was resurrected. They didn't recognize Jesus until he opened up their eyes. So John is standing there and he's looking at himself up there. I wonder if the one that asked him the question was John himself. Saying, don't worry about it, buddy. It's going to be okay. I'm on the other side. I'm on the end. The lamb, he's worthy to open up the scroll. And maybe today you might be needing to talk to yourself. And you need to hear the words to yourself that whatever you're going through, it's going to be okay. It doesn't matter what happens on this earth. The only thing that matters is our eternity with Jesus. And if we're focused on that, then the things of this world don't matter. You see, God's trying to tell you it's going to be okay. I win in the end. I've got you covered. You're going to be with me for all eternity. Just trust in me with your life. Follow my ways and I promise you it's going to be okay. I'm going to close out. If you're my friend on Facebook, you've probably seen this poem. And if you're not, then I'll share it with you and, and we'll all hear it today. But I wrote this poem to go with this sermon. It's called Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the lamb that for sin was slain, died in our place to redeem our name. 
The scroll at the end no one could open. Weeping occurred when men stopped hoping. Then the Lamb of God rose to take hold of the scroll, opened it there so that all men would know. There's only one Lamb worthy to save hundreds of millions from the call of the grave. People from every tribe, nation, and tongue. Praise shall arise from the old and the young. You saved us, redeemed us by your blood, we are healed. We praise God Almighty, our protector and shield. What can man do to those that are saved that rise up to heaven to sing of his praise? One day they'll see the one that is true, that is worthy of honor, that sees everything through. Why can't they see what's holding them back from turning to him and getting on track? Can they see his worth living in you? Don't they know that he's made you new? Now is the time. Today of all days, we start living for him and giving him praise. For this lamb that was slain is worthy of all praise. Forgiving our sin and guiding our ways. Give glory to God who sits on the throne before it's too late and he calls you home. Let's pray. Father, I can't help but get excited when I picture what John is picturing. <laughs> when we're all standing before you in your glory. I can't help but get excited. I look forward to that day when we step out of all the troubles of this world, all the nonsense and all the evil that exists here and we stand in your holy presence and we never have to worry about sin again. I look forward to that day. And I pray that that day is coming soon, that you may take your children home, that we may dwell with you forever. But God, in the time that we have left, before the day comes, Father, help us to care about those that are here that don't know you. Help us to reach out, to tell them of your love and your mercy and, and the goodness that you've given us and how our lives are changed because of your goodness that dwells in us. Nothing that we have done, God, but what you have done in us. Help us to relay that message so that they too can have an eternity in heaven. Father, we need your strength and courage to accomplish that. Father, I pray that you help us. And Father, as always, if, if there's anybody that's struggling, that the weight of the world is just too much, Father, I pray that they would seek you with all their heart. Father, that they would know that there's comfort and peace and love in your presence. Father, I pray for those that don't know you that might be listening to this. I pray today, they see today is the day of salvation. Somebody that might be listening to it on the, on the video on the internet, God. I pray today they would open up their eyes, open up their heart to your love and your mercy. Father, we know the days are growing shorter. Time is coming to an end. Whether it happens in our lifetime or not, we know that time is winding down because your word says it is. So, Father, help us to be real for you and real for our loved ones and friends and co-workers. And Father, even our enemies, help us to show them the love of Christ. Help them to see Father, we give this time to you in the name of Jesus. Amen.